Welcome to Talking Comics, where we are bagged, boarded, and pre-recorded. I'm Ryan. I'm Sean. Uh, welcome back again. Uh, what is this, like 14 now? I don't know. I've, I'm losing track. It's been so long, you know, yeah. all these other people. Like, it, it feels like it's been forever since we actually did a podcast, even though it was last week. <laughs> I think we're alone now. Doesn't seem uh, to be anyone around. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't we don't have a guest with us today. No. Nope. Uh, <clears throat> Sorry, folks. It's just us. It's just us. You have to listen to us <laughs> ramble on by ourselves like a couple of crazy people, a couple of crazy bearded mountain men living outside, <laughs> just outside of Portland. No, uh, no, no loud noises, or we're going in the bunker. <laughs> Hit the deck. Uh, the, you did say deck, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no don't hit that don't hit that right. uh yeah i think we had we've had so much go on since uh last week you know like it feels Crazy. like it's been a long time since we did another podcast we were uh we were shooting for one saturday yeah uh we were gonna do a little like half live cast at the uh yeah right <laughs> well i say half live because like we were would have been live from the event. Well, I guess uh, it was very, it was very live, live at the time. Very busy. Yeah, so, so we, we didn't get even close to. We it. were lucky to get out what you squeezed out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Thank you, everybody, by the way, for coming out. Yeah, that was a really good turnout. Awesome. Uh, I handled a lot of meat that day. You did. <laughs> I, I, I was one of the burger runners. I enjoyed watching you doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I it was really fun. I had a lot of fun doing that. And yes, thank you. I appreciate everything yeah. you did. Even though I showed all up, you guys, I showed up a little late. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, I thought I needed to be up by nine, not there by nine. That was your first mistake. See, <laughs> you're thinking, yeah. Work, you're working without tools. <laughs> sick burn. No, <laughs> oh, get some aloe for that. <laughs> you want some aloe for that sick burn? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yes, as busy as we were, though, we had time to read some stuff, didn't we? Yes, I uh, do it, sir. We uh, we got some comics to cover today. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna start off with. I guess this is kind of a taboo on this channel now. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna put us at at some risk, but I'm gonna talk about it because gonna, it needs to be said. You're gonna invoke the wrath. Batman Rebirth. <sighs> Sounded like, that, that wasn't a burp. I just said it funny. <laughs> Rebirth. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've been reading the Rebirths that I uh, bought like a, two weeks ago now, I think. And so far, they're pretty good. Uh, it's From what I understand, Rebirth isn't a reboot. It's like more of an apology. Yeah. For... Like I, I don't get me wrong. I loved a lot of the things that happened in the new Fifty Two, but you know there was stuff like, you know, like I said when I talked about re- DC Universe Rebirth last week, Wally West wasn't in the new Fifty Two, and they're yeah. bringing him back. It's just like, hey, we're sorry. P.S. Here's Wally West back. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of a yeah. The new Fifty Two was either hit or miss. Yeah, for a lot of people, either really really love it or really really hate it. Yeah. This, Overall, I kind of like. I mean, uh, but then you have comics like Court of Owls and Death of the Family, which were have become instant classics. I mean, it's only been like five years since those came out, and they're already some of the most like many people's favorite comic books. Yeah, ten ton in lore. (laughs) Uh, So I yeah, I read Batman Rebirth, and uh, well, there's not a lot I can say about it really. It was. It's a single issue. I mean, it just came out not too long ago. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, there wasn't a lot to it. There really wasn't. Like, how did it treat you? It was. It was interesting, and it definitely a lot. I'm very intrigued with what happens next. Uh, so far, the main antagonist uh, is Calendar Man. Sweet. Yeah, I thought you'd like that. Oh, see. I've sit there. I sell them. It's it's this rebirth. Just get them while you can, because once they're gone, they're gone. Yeah, I mean, and I haven't even had time to read any of this. So you're, I'm listening along with the audience. Yeah, the so. uh, 
please expand. I mean, the... <laughs> the... Calendar Man? Yeah. Oh, I love yeah. that, man. Uh, it starts out with him and Batman fighting each other, of course. Calendar Man's got some weird ray gun thing he's shooting, and there's pollen in the air. Okay. And there's some weird pollen that, yeah, if, yeah, yeah. if it gets out, it's going to screw up the... Uh, I was gonna say the if it, seasons. I was gonna say if it was a fist fight, that wouldn't be much of a fight. So he's yeah. gotta have. I was, that's what I was gonna say. Uh, and uh, one thing I have to say about the story, though, is it kind of jumps around a bit and makes it kind of convoluted and confusing. Who wrote this, Zack Snyder? Uh, n- <laughs> I don't. I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh. But it looked really good as a whole. Like the art was really nice. Um, a lot of uh, yeah, I felt like there there wasn't enough backstory to it. But then again, I'm really far behind on my comic books right now. I mean, this right. is, these are the newest comics for the rebirth. All the number ones, I can tell you, Jeff Loeb is writing all the number ones. Ah. And this is going to be the one and only time, kind of like getting your number, your first pr- run number ones mm-hmm. with Jeff Loeb. I mean, there'll still be the writing, but it's going to be like you know the second run, the third run. So mm-hmm. that's what I mean by get them while you can. Yeah, because they're going off the shelf real quick. Because he's going on to do, um, he's co-writing the four or five. Ben Affleck Batman movies. He's oh, doing he's the gonna... Justice League movie. He's he's doing the movie thing now. Yeah, he's but gonna he be bombed in. Busy. Yeah, but uh, so this is I'm the excited. one time where he got to sit down and do all the issue ones. Yeah, you know yeah, that's really cool. Uh, uh, one of the characters that uh, they brought in for the in in this was Duke Thompson. I talked a little bit about him mm-hmm. way back when I talked about we are robin yes yes he's the uh kid his parents in uh what was it called uh end game in joker's end game uh his parents were affected and like kidnapped or whatever and went missing due to the big joker toxin outbreak and he's like a grown-up now essentially and I'm, i feel like i missed something <laughs> I haven't read all the We Are Robins. Volume 2 hasn't even come out yet as a trade paperback. I heard some whispers online, so grain of salt, grain of salt, grain of salt, that the Suicide Squad movie in August, Mm -hmm. the tattoos I was kind of pooping on with the Joker, have a little link to uh, or set up for maybe a future in-game movie Hmm. with him. That'd be kind of cool. I don't know what that. I mean, I've, any seen, of that I've, means. I've seen a lot of hearsay about the uh, Suicide Squad Joker's tattoos. Oh yeah, and how like someone was theorizing uh, that that Robin tattoo that he has on his arm means that he's actually Jason Todd. And I'm like, they wouldn't do that. Like, that would be the biggest blatant screw you fans thing yeah. that they could do. I think it's like, hey. I killed Robin. I'm inking it on my skin forever as a middle finger to Batman. Well, I read the, uh, last week you introduced the, uh, DC Rebirth. Yes. And uh, the, yeah, the, uh, uh three Jokers. Mor- Morbius chair. Yeah. And then, so I delve deeper a little bit and mm-hmm. there's a, uh, Let's see a prologue issue that lead. It's kind of like a backstory, if you would, of yeah. Dark Knight, Frank mm-hmm. Miller's Dark Knight, where I don't know if you remember. You remember Dark Knight when the, the little scene there where you know, Batman's retired, blah blah blah. And yeah, Gordon sits there and talks to him. They're having drinks, and mm-hmm. he mentions great Dick Grayson. Yeah, and he's like, kind of Bruce, kind of shuns it, goes on. Mm-hmm. The Last Crusade thing, they kind of hint at the fact that he... They tie it in beautifully where he was one of the Jokers. Really? I'm just like... (laughs) Weird. (laughs) What? Uh, But yeah, uh, Duke Thompson is one of the Robins from the We Are Robin comic. And uh, Bruce has him come over to the mansion. And he's like, "What, what do you need any... Do you need my help with something? I mean... I mean, you're Batman, you're up on the gargoyles, and 
us Robins, we're down on the streets. Mm -hmm. He's like, I don't need a Robin. Then why am I here? I had something new in mind. And he gives him this, it's like a yellow and black, like, leather jacket and, like, pants Mm -hmm. uh, with a bat symbol on the chest. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So he's, I think the goal, they're turning him into a new bat family member. Not a Robin. Not a Robin. He's not going to be a Dead Robin giveaway. anyway. He got pants. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Uh, they inter- I, I, I was introduced to a lot of new stuff in this. Like, I guess I can only really describe it as Calendar Man's ability. Mm-hmm. He, ate, he ages with the seasons. Yes. Uh, and molts. Like winter, he he dies and like cocoons essentially and molts his thing in the spring. Yeah, he's definitely. It's never been explained to my knowledge, but I'd never heard of this before. Like a meta. Yeah. But he's not like running around, you know, doing like mass chaos. But yeah. You come to him. He doesn't come to you. <laughs> type thing. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of like the Hannibal Lecter of the DC <laughs> universe. <laughs> All the all of the uh, iterations of uh, Calendar Man I've ever seen up until this point, he's been a fat guy, and he's always been in Arkham. He's always yeah. locked up. He's always locked. Yes, up. that's yeah. <laughs> like in uh, Long Halloween, he was a big old fat guy locked yeah. up in, and in uh, what was it? One of the Batman video games, he was a big old fat serial killer guy. Like Arkham City or something like yeah, that? Yeah, one of those. Yeah. So what do they make him in this one? Uh, he was kind of on the skinny, muscular side. Like like a Jonathan Crane looking type? Or like, like a lean, muscular, he, Nightwing he, looking? Uh, somewhere in between. Like, he looked more average size. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, but, yeah, it showed like him like old and like decaying. And then, like, at the very uh, end, it shows him emerging anew in a young form again. And apparently, they uh, Duke did a bunch of research on old files on Calendar Man. Uh-huh. He's like, and he's, like, talking to Batman about it. So he does this, and he always comes back new and different with new ideas, better plans. He always comes back better. How do we beat that? He's like... And Batman replies, we just have to come back even better. <laughs> we nice. just have to come back even better. Yeah. Uh, and there's, as far as like the comic goes, that's, there's not much I can say other than uh, I think Duke is going to become a mainstream Batman character now. Sweet. Okay. Uh, I really liked his character. I'm going to have to, as soon as I find, uh, as soon as that volume two, We Are Robin Art comes out, I got to read that because I am confused. <laughs> he was like 15, 16. And then there was a time jump. And now he's like, I can only assume 18 to 20. Oh, okay. Like, he's like the same height as Batman now, where before he was like this kind of scrawny kid. There was a growth spurt, <laughs> <Yeah>. sir. <laughs> what did I miss? <laughs> yeah, I, I've missed so much. I mean, granted, they grew, there are, up, they grew up so fast. <laughs> I, I got to start getting my hands on some more Batman comics from the New 52, I guess, uh, to catch up. <laughs> because I'm behind. I am behind. All right. Uh, but yeah, that, that's about all I can say about that. It was decent. I'm very curious what comes next on the in the story. Uh, Sweet. Yeah, I haven't read it yet. Calendar yeah. Man hasn't been in the spotlight in a while, which is kind of cool. It's always Joker this, Joker that. Yeah. Uh, I like seeing the other, you know, villains get time in the limelight. Yeah, he has more than one villain. Oh yeah. He's... Well, apparently he has three Jokers now. Sucks so... to be Batman, huh? <laughs> we'll put them on the back. But there, there's not one. There's three Jokers. So, uh, so... we're gonna introduce three Jokers, yeah. and then we're not gonna focus on them at all. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> you bastards! Don't tease me. We're just gonna show uh, show the fans a little side boob, but not the full boob. <laughs> Speaking of focus, are we focused on October? What's coming October? I, well, it's funny you ask, sir. Let me tell you. October 4th. That's when Flash comes back on. Oh, I can't wait. Right? Right? How awesome was that? That, that oh, season finale? Dude, that was so cool. Oh, man. Setting up for the uh, 
Flashpoint. Flashpoint. Although, but, oh my god, my brain's gonna explode. The um, on a side, a personal note, I did like how they put because I watched the '90s short-lived, yeah. failed TV series of Flash. And for those uninitiated, the guy who plays Barry's dad was the Flash in the early 90s show. Yeah. And the fact that they just gave him the Jay Garrick suit from Earth 3. Yeah, that was cool. Oh, man, that was awesome. That was so cool. So, yeah, that, that uh, Flash Season 3 will be coming back October 4th. Um, Arrow, which will be October 5th, the next night. A little Heard less a lot excited. Of, uh, yeah, why is that? A lot of people are, are just crapped on the Arrow. Um, why? Why is that? I don't know. I mean, that that season finale definitely left me wanting. It's kind of tough. I mean, I understand because I was like first two seasons, even three in, and then afterwards, honestly, I was like it kind of uh, plateaued. In I wasn't as excited to yeah. watch Arrow. Yeah, it really plateaued and like. Just kind of stayed at the same I know, level. I was like, uh, okay, yeah, it's recorded. I'm, I know, let's just I have nothing watch to do Samara. tonight, so. Ooh, Daredevil's on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to watch Jessica Jones for the third time, you know, type of thing. But, as I said before, I, I, I'm pretty sure I've said this on, on the show. Yeah, I've heard talk this of some. This is the last season. Like, Berlanti and, and Kreisberg said they're only doing five for Arrow. Arrow. And this season, they're bringing in Valanche Vigilante. Nice. I have Vigilante books in, in the store. Remember? Yeah. Are you familiar with Vigilante? I, I'm somewhat familiar. And Wild Dog. Wild Dog? This, I don't know if it predates or postdates Casey Jones from Ninja Turtles. Because he's rocking a hockey mask and a jersey. Hmm. And they're, but Vigilante, if I remember, I mean, spoilers, I have Vigilante books in there. Not really... They're, they're kind of just there. Yeah. But they, it was a limited series. Mm-hmm. And if I remember right, at the end, he does this thing. He tells a whole story, the whole story arc and everything. Yeah. And at the end, he ends up killing himself. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so. um, you know what I wish that they would have done more with and done a lot better with Arrow? Wildcat. Yeah. Yeah. When I... When that... That guy being Wildcat finally clicked in my head. I was like, all right, he's uh-huh. not an old man. And he's a young buck training the yeah, new he's black not like, canary. He's yeah. not, he's not a, you know, in, th- in this, he reluctantly starts being vigilante again, only because he has to be. And in every, you know, characterization of Wildcat I've seen before, he's in his like 50s or 60s. Yeah. He's old. He's still tough as. Tough as a na- as da- as nails, but he won't give up on being a vigilante, even though everyone's like, "Dude, you need to retire." Every time somebody tells him that, he just feeds his flame, you know. Yeah, yeah that's that'll be good. I think they're gonna, you know, it's kind of tough telling stories, you know, especially yeah. for those guys. I mean, when you know, writing for TV, the rule was. Let's see, what, 21, 22, 23 episodes. Mm -hmm. So the rule was you get seven awesome episodes a season, you get seven good episodes, and then you get seven not-so-good episodes. Yeah. Take it for what it's worth, you know? Unless you're, you know, The Flash. It's tough. Well, (laughs) I mean, that's yet to... The ratio does change a little on The Flash show. Even, I mean, as much as I... They weren't all perfect, that's for sure. Well... That's what that's what I mean. Uh, I've also heard talk of uh, Onomatopoeia for uh, yes, Arrow. Kevin Smith. I'd love and to see that. And I feel bad. Stephen for Amell is totally being his cheerleader for it. It's like, yeah, get him on the writing writing nice. staff. Yes. Yeah, so um, go Kevin. Go go Kevin. Go. Due to a, uh, I, I was I follow Kevin Smith on Twitter and. Uh, he was getting a lot of flack due to some people misconstruing some of his one of his tweets about uh, fuck, what's her name uh, Smoke Felicity yes Felicity uh, about like and apparently she her the actress has been getting like death threats and stuff I haven't heard it wait a minute wait a minute are you telling me 
that somebody on the internet wrote something and then a lot of other people on the internet took it the wrong way. I am. It's and hard to believe, I know. They made their lives just consume with this meaningless, made-up bullshit. I know, it's ridiculous. I know. Who who works their life around made-up bullshit? I wish we're, we had... We're both looking at you right now, people. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some do- t- sometime down the line we'll have a camera to, like, obviously look at. Like, <laughs> who listens to this made-up bullshit? <laughs> Uh, but yeah, yeah, he was getting a lot of flack for that, and I was like, "It's, it's." I I read the tweet. I don't remember it word for word, but it was just a misunderstanding. He doesn't want her to die. It was along those lines. People like, "What do you got against Felicity Smoke? You're all men are." And it, it got got into like the whole sexism thing. I'm gonna just, we're just gonna pass this by for now. But it's, it was just all bullshit. Oh, and, I can tell you right now, like Kevin Smith is the last person that is sexist or anything like yeah. that. And he's, he likes Felicity Smoke's character. He's not going to kill her off. Is what At, at the very end of all the t- people tweeting at him, he's like, listen, I like Felicity Smoke. Uh, and he says whatever the actress's name is, I can't remember. Total sweetheart. I'm not going to kill her off. Right. I can write around her being killed off as a character. I'm the writer. <laughs> and let's... Uh address the elephant in the room she ain't bad to look at either. <laughs> oh yeah seriously I've, I've been uh as as the kids say shipping uh her and barry allen <laughs> i'm like shipping i'm like now kiss I'm, what did, I'm like what? forcing their heads together is that what the kids say because i heard what you said the other day what'd you call it wafting the jerky <laughs> <laughs> well uh from my understanding it's uh it's when you, uh, shipping is, uh, like, putting two people together that aren't together. Like, I, I can't explain it to an old person. It's just something you gotta know. Like, Aflac and... Like fan fiction, essentially. Jennifer Lopez? Benifer? That type of thing? It, it's just, like, you know, made-up fan fiction of, like, you're like, alright, if these two, I want these two uh, characters together. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Kind of like um, the Flash Supergirl crossover, which you haven't seen. No, I haven't. Still. Because I don't get Supergirl. You don't will. don't put it on Hulu. That's what I'm... Excellent lead in. Because Flash, one of my favorite moments in all of, so far, 2016, mm-hmm. Barry Allen brought Kara ice cream. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, yeah. Quick. Just... <laughs> The crossover episode, yeah, which did not cancel. Which, by the way, Supergirl, October tenth, and she's getting <laughs> brought over to the CW. CW yes, awesome. yes, and there is a final casting for Superman. They're bringing in Superman this new season. Finally, finally, his name is Tyler Hecklin. He was on that Teen Wolf. Huh. He was. The, I've never seen it, so he's either the alpha or the beta, or they... I, I never watched the I remember Teen the Michael Wolf. J. S- J. Yeah, Fox that's, movie. That's the only Teen Wolf I'll, they, I'll ever They did know. a series. Yeah, they did a little TV series. Yeah, remember. yeah. So Tyler Hecklin, yeah, Superman. And he's not going to be... Because, like, the first season, you kind of see him backlit. You yeah. know, you never see his face. Uh, there was an episode where... Um, uh, what is it? The... Kryptonians, the evil Kryptonians, yeah. came down. They, you know, took over mind control and everything. And Superman fell into that. And you saw him in the distance, mm-hmm. and it's like, oh shit, they're bringing in Superman. He came in, and then he just dropped in the rest of the crowd and like tranced off with them. Hmm. And then you saw him there, and they were like recouping. And then he took off. Yeah, interesting. But I tell you, Berlanti and Kreisberg with the Supergirl show. It was a little rocky when it first started. Yeah. They've been telling better Superman stories than old Snyder over there, <laughs> <laughs> Warner Brothers. Yeah, for Christ's sake, man! They did um, for the man. They did the uh, the man who has everything with the 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 black. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. What is it? Remember, I was, ta- I was talking about a couple. Episodes yeah, yeah, ago. I remember. I know what you're talking about Black Mercy. That's it. They've done um, Martian Manhunter. Mm-hmm. They've done the White Martians. I mean. All the stuff. Yeah. Uh, 
yeah, it's, it, it hands down could be my favorite. Yeah. I, if anything, I'd like to see Kevin Smith. If he were to do, I, of course, I'd like to see Automatopoeia. Yeah. But I'd like to see him do Supergirl. If yeah. he were to do something like that. Yeah, that'd for, be cool. For, Jesus, they've done Toy Man on there. <laughs> Toy Man, which was an awesome episode. I mean, just the people that show up on that on that show is awesome. You have to see it. Yeah. You have to once, see it. once it's on Hulu, I will watch it. The it's second just... season, like I said, they're bringing in Superman. Yeah. And Mark Berlanti and Andrew Kreisberg, they've spun gold as far as I'm concerned yeah. with their shows. Supergirl, Flash, Legends of Tomorrow, Green Arrow. But they never let him play with the the Holy Trinity, as they call him. You know, Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman. Yeah. But as history has shown in the past, there's been, all right, Superman in the movies, Batman in the movies, and on TV. Yeah. And it's been totally separate entities. Mm-hmm. They're finally letting them do it. Give them Superman. Yeah. You know? And it's going to be awesome. So, yeah, that uh, Tyler Hecklin... Uh, look, I I'm, wish him all the best, man. It's going to be awesome, yeah, I'm and it's not going to be like just a episode. He's going to be a in, frequent guest yeah, star. Yeah, yeah. Right on. Yeah, that's which is awesome. Definitely looking forward to uh, the TV shows that are coming out at, at the end of the summer. Yes. Uh, especially with the way they left us off with uh, Legends. Our man. Yeah. Oh. Setting up for Justice Society. Right. Oh God, that they set it up in Supergirl. They did. Yes. Huh? Told you about the rings and everything. Yeah. And Forge Solitude and... Oh, yeah. Right on. Yeah, so now that she's finally part of the... They the took Berlanti her off. The Yeah. Well, officially. she always was, but well, like officially. CW... DCW? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that'll be really cool. I'm definitely... I'm definitely looking forward to that. <clears throat> uh, speaking of The Flash... Yeah. I also had a read of... The Flash Rebirth. All right. Which, for those of you who know, I'm a huge Flash fan. No. I know. It's it's surprising, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> I despise the Flash. When people, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> when people ask me, hey, what's your uh, favorite superhero? I'm always torn. Like, there's so many great ones to pick. And, like, in my, like, top five are, like, here, like, last... A few weeks ago when Grant was like, oh, your favorite superhero is Spider-Man. Well, technically, he is one of my favorite superheroes. But equally is one of my favorites, The Flash. Mostly because yes. he, he's kind of like DC's uh, Spider-Man. Um, deals a lot with, you know, the on-the-street stuff while also taking care of uh, the, you know, big baddies. He's like just your everyday Joe. Yeah. But a forensic scientist. When he could easily make bank... Being a Domino's <laughs> delivery guy. <laughs> 15 minutes or less. <laughs> it's funny you say that. In one of the uh, panels in the comic, he uh, brought a kid pizza. The fuck? He saved this kid. Are you kid serious? Was, the kid was hungry, so he brought him pizza. <laughs> God. Uh, so the comic starts out, uh, the first, like, first page is a crime scene. Uh, a murdered wife and mother, you know. Okay. Uh, the son saw the whole thing. They think the father oh, did Oh, okay. Barry Allen is working the scene. It's not his, it's not his, but it's exactly like his. Okay. Uh, and, you know, the cops are like, yeah, I think the husband did it. And uh, Barry's like, ah, be careful, detective. That's how uh, the justice system gets abused. Hint being like, yeah, my, my dad went to prison. Yeah. Because of cops like you just being like, yeah, the husband did it. Throw him in jail. I don't know why they're from New York. <laughs> I, just, I, I felt like I was in Long Island again. <laughs> from Queens. What's up, <laughs> what's up mustache? <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, then it kind of, and uh, you know, his, his chief is like, Alan, I'm taking you off this. It's too much like your 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 mother's case. It's, yeah, like, it's that's too personal. Why, that's yeah. why I need to be on this. Any other tech is gonna uh, just write off as the husband did it. Mm-hmm. it my, my father wouldn't have gone to prison if uh, the scene had been taken care of properly. Oh, okay. See, that's that pulls the reader in because it makes right off the bat it makes me wonder when you said that. 
Do you think they bring like real life forensics in just for like consulting? Oh, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Right? I would not be surprised. Uh, but while he's talking to his chief, uh, he starts getting these weird flashes. Mm-hmm. And he he's like, are these like visions of a new power? What's going on? He's like giving him a headache. He's just, he goes and he starts, uh, he goes to who he gets his advice from. His dad. In this, apparently his father is alive. Oh, really? And Okay. I can only assume that the popularity of the TV show, uh, you know, his dad was alive for all those seasons. The You know, most of the first, for the first and most of the second season. Uh, I can only assume that they're like, all right, show's really popular. People seem to like, you know, his dad being around to give him advice. That's Jeff. Jeff, you know, he's got multiple resources these days. And I thought it was really cool, you know, him having someone to talk to. Because, you know, originally his dad died in prison. Yeah. Had a heart attack or something. But this coincides with the, uh, you know, rebirth. Yeah. Wally West, his dad, you know, who else is alive? Hmm. Think about that. <laughs> um, and uh, so th- it kind of leads, and so he, his dad's like, "You just just need to slow down, you know, th- just relax." And he's like, "I I relax and think the best when I'm on the move." So he you know suits up, does his little superhero thing, going around, you know, gets kid a, a hungry kid that he saved pizza. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, <laughs> and he's running and lightning bolt strikes down right next to him as he's running and it's Wally that scene from they tied DC it in universe rebirth that I oh, talked about the other like last that's week. what I asked you last week I go you think they're just gonna, they're just gonna mesh everything in <laughs> at the, well at the time I hadn't I didn't know because I hadn't read right right, read right, the right. Flash yeah yet. Um, <clears throat> so they talk a little and he says uh, you know, he explains that the flashpoint, because uh, it seems like Barry, oh, excuse me, uh, doesn't remember much, which is really weird because you know, at the end of the flashpoint paradox, he remembers both lives. He's outran both those. <laughs> like I'm, like the whole situation confuses me. If he remembers his previous life, and his life in the flashpoint, and he has this new life. How does he not remember? And that's because... He is the... I'm just guesstimating here. The epitome of the Speed Force. Yeah. The living embodiment. Well, like... So that will come... I'm sure that will come into play. Well, the thing... That's uh, what those flashes are earlier were. It was hit, hit, Speed Force trying to make him remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and speaking of that... The reason that Wally was able to stay on Earth and not get sucked back into the Speed Force was because Barry grabbed him and held him into place and kept him on this plane. Um, the, yeah, to hear you tell it, he's the living... Well, he always has been. The living yeah. embodiment of the Speed Force. Uh, like, when he dies or gets sucked into the Speed Force himself, it, it can no longer grow. Each... Each step he takes, the kinetic energy yeah. fuels the speed force. Yeah. And uh, expansion. Yeah. Makes him and the other speedsters who use his speed force more powerful. How many of you right now, folks, are like, what the hell are you two talking about? <laughs> Read the flash. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. So, uh, so him and Wally are talking, like uh, I said in the previous episode something else re something else changed everything mm-hmm. someone else changed everything even now i feel like we're being watched ah and that's where the book previous you know last week's book ends uh uh-huh. uh so you know they start talking and uh wally's going to go connect with the other uh titans you know, find out what they know, right. even though his Titan team was never formed. Uh, so, Barry is like, all right, well, I'm going to go talk to Batman about this. So, he goes over there, and uh, 
uh, la la, uh, talks to Batman. Batman's already working the case, essentially. I mean, he's trying to figure out where the heck this pin came from. The comedian's pin. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And so uh, Barry's saying, uh, everyone says Batman's the world's greatest detective. I think he's, but I, I think of him more like me, a forensic tech. Because he uses, you know, has high tech technology, mm-hmm. does the testing, does all the sciencey stuff that I don't understand because I'm not smart. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, and they decide that they're gonna work this case together. They're not gonna, they're not gonna tell the other Justice Leaguers yet. They're not gonna tell. Every, they're just keeping it to, between them. Batman says we need to work, let's work this together. So they're gonna be. I'm assuming the. F- Next flashes are going to be some buddy cop stuff between Barry and Batman. Oh, that would be awesome! I know. Like, you see me just perk up right now. That's, <laughs> that's my dream team. I know, right? There, there, there's a law and order. I'd like my face I'd was watch. starting to hurt from the smiling, <laughs> the rictus grin <laughs> going behind your head. <laughs> oh, we look like a couple of Cheshire cats up in here. Maybe there's more than just three jokers now. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. All right, settle down. Um, yeah, I'm super excited for this. Uh, I'm debating whether or not I want to just buy the issues as they come out, or if I want to uh, trade you know, paperback it. Just wait for the trade paperback in like a half a year. Oh. It's I'm I'm really torn. Uh, I also I bought the variant cover of this comic, mm-hmm. and I need to get a frame of some kind that's like fitted for that because it, I don't want to hang that. I'm not going to open that one. Nice, nice. But yeah, it was super good. I really, really liked it, and uh, I'm definitely looking forward to reading the other rebirths, especially the Titans one since Wally is back, and I think it's going to be very heavily focused on him. Yeah, and he actually gets a new suit. He's wearing the old suit, and actually, while well, he, him, and uh, he's like, oh, "Man, I need to get a uh, get." Barry says, "We need to get you a new suit." And he's like, "Oh, I'll just generate one from the Speed Force." And Barry's like, "Oh, I guess I had forgotten that we can do that." He's like, "And Wally, are you still using the ring?" <laughs> <laughs> hey, I don't want no lip from the dead guy. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, what what do you got? Uh, let's see. Um, have you been uh, internet savvy? I got a couple little bullet points here. Did you hear uh, uh, John Boyega? Who? The guy who played Finn in the Star Wars movie? Mm, mm. Black guy. He signed on for uh, Pacific Rim 2. Did you see Pacific Rim? I did not. I really wanted to, but I uh, I never got around to seeing it. Oh, it's pretty good. Um, this number two, I, it was good. I thought it was good. It was like a giant monster Japanese movie. Yeah. Which was really good. Didn't do too well. I guess not so well in the States, but killed, obviously, in overseas. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah, oh, that was great. I, I, all the commercials and stuff I saw, I really wanted to go see it, but I just, uh, I never, I never got around to it. There was a, there was a character that, um, his name was Stacker Pentecost, and John Boyega is playing his son, hmm. in in the second one, directed by uh, Stephen Denight. Yeah, does that name ring a bell? Kinda. Spartacus. He did a. It started out with uh, Whedon. Doing the Buffy, the vampires. Oh, oh, right on. And he did Spartacus and the first season of Daredevil Ooh. Netflix. So he's directing the specific yeah. room too. And there, there's a little thing I saw on the internet saying, um, so he's the son of Stacker Pentecost from the first one. Mm-hmm. And they're they're kind of reaching out to the fans, you know, saying uh, what what his name should be. All right. Any ideas? Because um, I did post on this. I actually broke down and. Delved into the internet. Huh. So his father's Stacker Pentecost. I posted Stacker (laughs) 2. Blacker Pentecost? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) Um, No, I really did post Stacker (laughs) 2. Stacker Jr. (laughs) 
Stacker two. You know, like that. What is that? The that vitamin pill, Stacker two, the weight loss thing. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's pretty pimp. And the other little thing I saw. What about? Uh, are you a World of Warcraft fan? Uh, I played a little a long time ago, but not religiously. What about the movie? Uh, I've I've heard mixed reviews on the movie. Uh, I might rent it once it comes out on DVD. Me too. But I heard it was made for people. It's kind of like there's a lot of stuff in there. Yeah, from what that I've... are from for the people who play the game. Yeah, which uh, I have not. I've, you know. You always got those people who are gonna shit all over, uh, yeah, c- CG characters. Big CG fest. But, but look, if you've seen any of the trailers, those orcs, they look fantastic. Yeah, they look so lifelike. Um, so you're not gonna hear me complain I about something the, like that. I saw that. the trailers for it. What? Yeah. I mean, look like the Hulk. You know, I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I'm watching this. I don't even play World of Warcraft, and I kind of want to see this. All right, check this out. I. Did the, the, like last week we were talking about Finding Dory. Yeah. The fish movie and everything. Okay, did the, the stats for this movie. Um, general overall consensus in the United States, keep in mind. Mm-hmm. Bigger flop, bigger flop than Battleship and Fantastic Four. Wow. It made a total of $24 million. I'm sure it did pretty know. good in South Korea. I'd like to have $24 million. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, me too. It killed. It did a bigger debut in China, in the Orient. Yeah. Than Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I remember hearing about that because yeah. one of the podcasts I watch uh, from this company called Screw Attack, uh, they have this little podcast they call it Side Scrollers because mm-hmm. they're a video game company and they talk about you know video game stuff like we do comic stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I guess we don't really we don't really just you know. Uh, do comic stuff over here like we're kind of slowly branching out a little bit it's called talking comics but it's basically just it's talking we're basically pop culture yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we'll change our name to talking nerds <laughs> talking whatever the hell we like uh <laughs> but yeah i mean in places like china and south korea world of warcraft is their what, what's something pop, it's their football yeah it's like our football is, but to like South Korea, uh, stuff like uh, Stargate, no, not Stargate, one of those things just like World of Warcraft made by the same company, they have huge tournaments where people like people do make a living off video gaming here. Oh, I know. But they make like, they're like rich people are professional gamers. I know exactly what you're talking about because I read and dug a little more on this. I fell down the rabbit hole. Um, what is gold mining? Do you know what that is in World of Warcraft? Yes. Uh, you're able to mine for gold and essentially uh, you are able to pay people real money to do all of that for you. Outsourcing fun yeah. is what I get. Yeah, exactly. So you know, this one, I... Poof, my head exploded. I'm like, you're outsourcing. It's a video game, and you're out- you're paying people to play for you. It's like, if I was like, oh man, I want to. Um... Oh, here's a good example. I really want to go see that new Batman v Superman movie. <laughs> go see it for me. <laughs> hey Ryan, here's, <laughs> thank, fi- thank- here's fifty bucks. Yeah, <laughs> the rest of that is yours. Go see that movie for me. <laughs> You're outsourcing fun. <laughs> You're paying. I really want to see all these comic book movies from now until 2020. I'm going to pay somebody to go see it and tell me about it. <laughs> That's what they're doing. That's awesome, man. You know, and, and once we start making uh, money off of off of this, that's what th- our fans will be doing. Is they'll be watching our podcast. We'll be making money and then spending that money to go watch the movie and then come back and tell them about them to make more money. I like where your head's at. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna do fame. Uh. But yeah, I thought that was just uh <laughs> Yeah, that's crazy to me. I mean, I uh I understand spending a little bit more money to like amplify the fun of a game. You get downloadable content. Uh, you know, you're like, "Oh, this like for a dollar or 2 dollars, I can buy this thing that'll give me more customization so I can make my character look the way I want to." <laughs> when you're flat out paying somebody yeah. to play it for you. Yeah. That, that's ridiculous <laughs> to me. Yeah. 
And, uh, yeah. Uh, speaking of video games, uh, I texted you the other day about this idea I had. Uh, this coming year, there's a couple of comic book video games that are coming out. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we got a Batman game, uh, Batman Return to Arkham, yes. and Spider-Man PlayStation 4, which but I'm really excited for. Badass suit. Yeah. Let alone. So, I'm thinking uh, sometime after those come out, I might play them and do my, my half of the podcast on that. Because, I mean, I don't want us to... Uh, be well, i'm gonna say stifled with just doing the same type of thing each week i definitely want us to you know i like i like keeping it fresh i like oh, yeah. you know having one of our friends come on and it's it's what makes this fun for me is you know i well, let's do it and you know i could, I could just sit there and heckle like one of the judges from the <laughs> muppets in the back watching you play <laughs> <laughs> maybe get a little screen capture uh set up <laughs> so we not of us but of the game and it'll yeah. just be you and I talking about it. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, totally. I'm, I'm, I'm. And the people that are making that Spider-Man game made some of my favorite childhood games. So I'm very excited. Oh, sweet. Sweet. Yeah. Um, um, speaking of Spider-Man. Oh, yes. Spider-Man's dad. Spider-Man's dad? Mr. Stan Lee. Rose City Comic Con. Oh, yeah. September 10th and 11th. Yes. Stan Lee is there. Awesome. For the last time. Oh, I, I have to go. Last time, people. I may never get the chance to get an autograph. That's it. The last time. He's just getting up there. Like, he had a huge turnout at New York City Comic Con. Yeah. He's doing the Rose City. He's doing the Wizard. He's, of course, San Diego. We're like... San Diego Comic Con is right around the corner. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I would th kill. this is it. Kind of like the uh, Eternal Masters for Magic and the DC Rebirth and the Captain... Get them while you can, because once it's gone, it's gone. I'm just going to get real close up to the mic here for a second. Ooh, sexy. I would literally kill someone to go to San Diego Comic-Con. <laughs> <laughs> and you can contact me about this hit that you need to request at ryangibson.com <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it right now ryangibson.com we're trying to get more viewers not scare people away <laughs> creepy scary Ryan, at Ryan, ryangibson.com at the internet <laughs> people are going to totally type that at ryangibson.com and some other Ryan Gibson around the world, he's going to be getting some very confusing emails. It's going to be like slash Arkham Asylum. <laughs> <laughs> Death Row. <laughs> uh, that creepy, scary voice. <laughs> but yeah, I, I definitely... I really want to go to Rose City Comic Con if I can. Maybe I should start putting some money away for that. So there you go. I mean, tickets aren't that expensive. Uh, that is one I've never been to. Yeah, me either. I've only, I've only ever been to one Comic Con and... It was Wizard World, so it was a little spendy. Yeah. But, you know, Wizard I was expecting it to be spendy because Wizard World is somewhat new in Oregon. I mean, it's only been going on here for, like, four years now. Something really? Like, yeah, like the one I went to, which I happened to be the one that you went to that I've one been time. To, then if it's only been four years, I've been to all four then. <laughs> like... Yeah, the one that I went to apparently was like either the only the first or second time that they had been in Oregon. What did you say? <laughs> oh yeah, before we uh, met. M maybe I, uh, <laughs> if I could get a hold of my old uh, Comic Con pictures, I wonder if I could find Sean Sasquatching, you know, the, in the background, <laughs> just stomping through the back of my picture, like the old Bigfoot footage. <laughs> huh? huh? Oh yeah, no, I was there. <laughs> Yeah, I, I definitely want to be able to go to more conventions like that. I mean, we have two every year here in Oregon. And uh, I'm going to hopefully be able to... I want, I want to go to more conventions. And I hope that, you know, some at some point we can, you know, do those conventions. Like, I'm, I'm planning way down the line for this podcast. I want this channel to grow. And I want to, want to go to the conventions. And I want people to be like, hey... 
Those are the guys from Talking Comics. It's those guys. It's those <laughs> those jackasses. I know, right? Well, I know for a fact that uh, San Diego Comic Con, which I've been to, not to brag, a couple times. Rub it in. There are showing um, nothing. From Fox. <laughs> now, I, I've noticed the trend lately where Fox, they did a uh, thing. So, like last year, they came in strong with X-Men Apocalypse, which I saw, by the way. T- Finally. Today. <laughs> Before I showed up. Oh, I just finished it. I, yeah, pretty much. And, um, but like these studios that have nothing, like, like Fox did this thing where it's like, um, well, due to piracy and everything, you know, with cell phones and this, that, and everything else, we could debut something. But the translation, when anybody says that, all that means is we have nothing. Yeah. We have nothing to present. Because you want those cell phones. You want that leak footage. For yeah. Christ's sake. That's how Deadpool got made. And Fox is still counting the money right now <laughs> as we speak. They're still, <laughs> they're still making money off of that movie. You know what's debuting, though? What? My form. My former boss, Bruce Tim, Killing Joke. Yes. Killing Joke is debuting at Comic Con. And it will be on Blu ray and DVD August 2nd. That's too long to wait. <laughs> but in between that and then, there's going to be select theaters where you can actually buy a ticket, go to the theater, and watch Killing Joke on Dude. There. Right? We need, to con- we need to go up to our movie theater and be oh. like, yo, hook this up. The problem is, though, is like. Well, not a problem. I mean, this is awesome. It was a problem for me, obviously, because I'm a retard. But remember what he did with Dark Knight Returns? Yes. Read the book, saw the movie. Mm-hmm. Awesome. That lends itself to be on screen. Yeah. I always thought of like as much as I love Killing Joke, it was a very very short read. Yeah. It's like how the fuck are they gonna do a movie like this? You know, it's like it's gonna be like short. This is why I once upon a time I worked for Bruce Tim and he didn't work for me. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, they're adding, you know, where if you anybody who's read Dark Knight Return or um, Killing Joke, I'm sorry, Barbara Gordon, Batgirl, is here. Then all of a sudden she's the victim, and then that's it. Yeah. Where you could stretch it out, and they're incorporating Batgirl. Excuse me, Batgirl Year One. It's like a whole backstory kind oh, of yeah, leading yeah. up, so it'll make. What happens in Killing Joke, more tragic. Mm-hmm. And they got Tara Strong to do the voice. Hmm. She's done the voice Batgirl. Yeah. You know, all through uh, the animated series and, and yeah, whatnot. They're getting, from what I understand, they're getting all the classic voiceover characters for this. Kevin Conroy's coming back to do Batman. Mark Hamill, Joker. Yeah. They got Ray Weiss for you Twin Peaks fans. Have you ever watched Twin Peaks? Um, he was... Leland Palmer, the dad. You ever seen Twin Peaks? No, I never watched that. Um, he was in Jeepers Creepers 2. He was one of the villains in the original RoboCop. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've known this guy. I mean, he's been around forever. Yeah. He's playing Commissioner Gordon, or he's voicing Commissioner Gordon. Oh, right on. Awesome. I love cool. Ray, Ray Weiss. Um, well, I think... Uh, well, we, I was thinking we might do Steve Rogers' Captain America. Let's do it. But I think I might want to save that one for next week. Okay. Because uh, I am slowly running out of comics to read. <laughs> uh, oh. And Have I you think read... I might save that material for next time. Okay. Well, I got a couple more. Little quick topics. All right. Um... What is your opinion of Spider-Man in the Civil War? Like, I don't already know the answer. <laughs> I loved it. It was awesome. Spider-Man Homecoming. I'm super stoked. I cannot wait. And then here we go. Here's where I don't know the answer to. I mean, I know the answer, but I don't know him personally. Donald Glover. He's a, he's a really good actor and a hilarious stand-up comedian. See, you're more in-depth than I am. Yeah. He was cast in Homecoming. <laughs> yes, I, I, I heard about that. I'm curious what they're going to do with him. I do not think that they're going to do a uh, Ultimate Spider-Man type thing, though. I'm actually positive that they won't. He does the voice for Miles Morales in Ultimate Spider-Man. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Uh, because would you like to explain for the uninitiated uh, the whole ultimate? Because people are like, 
Why is that a big deal? Uh, <laughs> Donald Glover? Spider-Man? The connection? The whole... Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so there is the ultimate... There's the 616 universe where the amazing Spider-Man is from. And then there's the ultimate universe, which I don't know the numbers of, that there's like the ultimate Spider-Man. And in that one, uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man, dies. And this half... Uh, I think Puerto Rican and half black kid named Miles Morales. From Queens. From Queens. Actually, I think he might have been from Brooklyn. I can't remember. I don't think he was from the same neighborhood. No, he was. He was? Yeah. Uh, Gets bit by a radioactive spider that was created by Norman Osborn. Um, But it's a slightly different strain. Anyways, he... He gets his powers. He doesn't want to, anything to do with it. He, his dad has always been like saying what a, you know, he's been pulling at James Jonah and saying superheroes are menaces. <laughs> here's a menace. <laughs> and so he's, uh, you know, he keeps his powers a secret. He only tells his best friend and uh, no one else until he witnesses Spider-Man die. And he starts to think, I have these powers. I could have done something. And, uh... So, eventually, he takes up the mantle himself. And becomes Spider-Man. So, he's like, you know, a mixed-race Spider-Man. And during the making of the Amazing Spider-Man films, the one with Andrew Garfield... Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a lot of hearsay that, oh, let's... We're, if we're gonna change it up, make Spider-Man a little bit more dark and edgy. Uh, why don't we make Spider-Man black? That's where he started showing up on my radar once yeah. upon a time. And people were like, Donald Glover, Gl- Donald Glover's nerdy. He could be Spider-Man. Yeah. So there was a lot of you know thing. Actually, if uh, if you want the full story from from Donald Glover, uh, go on to Netflix sometime and type in his name. And watch his stand-up special. He has a whole bit on it. You will laugh your ass off. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah, and see, that was the thing. Originally created, you know, Spider-Man, Jack Kirby, Stan Lee, blah, blah, blah. He was one of the few characters in the beginning that had everyday problems. Yeah. Like me, you, the guy down the street. I missed you know. my school bus. Yeah. I... And not to mention the fact that unlike Superman or Captain America or Batman or anything like that, he was covered head to toe. Yeah. So you could be an Asian kid. You could be a black kid. You could be a Persian. You could yeah. be anything. And you could actually, when he's fighting the Green Goblin or the Vulture or Venom, yeah. you know, you could relate to that character. Yeah. You know? And just the nerdy... Especially, you know, the people... The, thing. Yeah. the people that were reading comics at the... In like, you know, the majority of comic readers are people like me who are yeah. nerdy, who enjoy fantasy, you know, video yeah. games, stuff like that. We got picked on in school and stuff As like that. As did Peter Parker or yeah. Miles Morales. or <laughs> And so we can relate so much to this character in the mask and, uh, you know, inside we, we want to have those clever quips. Those, you know. Yeah. We want to... Uh, take down take the bully down a notch but we can't he's the every man's hero man spider-man you know <laughs> yeah and that's why i mean a kid i've always said like stan lee is the modern day mark twain he writes that's stories true. and he touches everybody that takes the time to read his stories in every way shape and form yeah you know like i said it was just genius head to toe i mean i can't think of any other character before spider-man that Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, I can't really yeah, think of either. anyone yeah. that just kind of like worked with the the everyday guy. Like I said, like I said, you know, Cap, Batman, you always saw like they had a mask, but yeah. you could see their bottom half of their face. Superman, no mask. Yeah, and you like know. Superman, he's got super strength. Yeah, he can fly. He's got all these crazy powers. He's Bat- an alien. Batman, born rich, trained himself to become a weapon. Yeah, Captain America, he's a like yeah, he was just a kid from Brooklyn, but. He got got the super soldier serum, got military training, all that stuff. Spider-Man, bit by a spider, 
two weeks later, everything. He's like, my uncle died. I could have stopped it. I didn't. I didn't. But I didn't. I had the power to do something, but I didn't. Everything that happens to him, leading into, was either happy or unhappy accidents. Yeah. It's like the Indiana Jones theory. You ever watched the very first Raiders of the Lost Ark? Uh, yes, I have. And you've heard that theory? Uh-uh. Where you can watch, go watch that movie from start to finish, and Indiana Jones has no bearing on that movie whatsoever. He doesn't even have to be in the movie. Everything that happens in that movie will still happen regardless <laughs> of him being there or not being there. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, like happy makes... accident type thing. So I was like, like, oh yeah, Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, he... Like, he doesn't, he wasn't born to do this. Yeah. He wasn't, like, he didn't, like. What about when he first got the powers? He would, he did something that you, I, or anybody listening right now wouldn't have done. Self-centered gain. He went in there and used his powers for, for selfish oh, reasons. Yeah, huh? And he was in a wrestling match. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he. He's a normal guy like all of us, yeah. except he's, you know, got superpowers. I can't, you can't say you wouldn't, you know, if you had spy, the powers of Spider-Man, you wouldn't go out and, you know. Show off. Show or, off. You know. or, how many, how many people even listening would even, like, take the time to get a suit? Or would they just show off and do this and do that and, <laughs> you know, hey, guys, look what I can do type thing. It's like the you know being a superhero as yeah. you know the way it is it's just like gone gone with the wind type <laughs> things like that's not even the car right, I got s- <laughs> me I'd be like alrighty I got superpowers I'm moving to New York yeah pretty much I'm gonna be on the uh, well Stan Lee said that too he's gonna be like on the uh, you know Tonight Show or something <laughs> like that if I had that you know that's that was his mindset when he first put him in that that first situation when he first yeah. got his powers like the- and I think another reason that uh Peter Parker, Spider-Man, is so such a great character is because he is, in a way, like we all kind of want to be good people, right? We don't yeah. want it. We don't want people to think we're bad or anything. And he, in a way, he's the best of us. Like he's what we want ourselves to be as individuals. Like we want to be good people. We want. Uh, well, it's like anything. I mean, again, Stan Lee, going back, that's why I've always all philosophical said up before. In this bitch. Well, yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. Um, that's why you will never see Uncle Ben or Thomas and Martha Wayne are the only characters in comics that will never come back from the dead. Yeah. Because it will negate everything that Spider-Man stands for because yeah. he was like that. Because, again, like you said, being philosophical, give any person what they want and eventually... They will kill themselves with it. And it needs to take a certain incident to change direction. Yeah. And their way of thinking and how they act and feel with what they have. And that's why Stanley said, with great power comes great responsibility. Or, you know, if you want to really quote it, with great power, there must come great responsibility. Yeah. Boom, knowledge bomb. Ooh, yeah. All yeah. right. We sound like grown-ups there for a minute. <laughs> Almost. I'm like, boom, bitch. Speaking of great power, I got one more topic. Yes. If you want to hang with me. Yeah. Civil War Two. I have not read that yet. I am a little bit so far. Okay? Mm-hmm. Check this out. Number one, this time, I know you folks probably saw the movie Civil War. Yeah. Tony Stark, Steve Rogers. Mm-hmm. This time, Ready? Tony Stark, <laughs> Carol Danvers. Yeah. Yeah. Miss Marvel. Which, well, by the way. Technically, at, right now, she's Captain Marvel. What do you got against captains, Mr. Stark? <laughs> they they cast, I think. Yes, I heard about Brie that. Brie Larson? Brie Larson. Are you familiar? The name sounds familiar, but I can't put a face to it. Brie Larson is cast as Miss Marvel, huh. Captain Marvel, whatever the hell you want. Carol Danvers. Yes. So, the story goes that I've read so far is, oh yeah, spoilers by the way, there is this kid in Columbus, Ohio, uh, University, Columbus, mm-hmm. Ohio, his name is Ulysses, um, super smart guy, you know, another Peter Parker, another Tony Stark, another Reed Richards in the making. Yeah. He gets exposed to the Terrigen Mist, 
guess what? Boom. He's an inhuman. Hmm. You go through, he comes out, and he has these cognitive powers where he can see into the future. Yeah. He can see death in the future. Wow. Let me ask you something. What if, can you see your own death? You picture yourself? How, how do you think you're going to die? Um, just uh, probably a heart attack or a brain aneurysm. That's kind of what I was thinking. I, more specifically, I was picturing myself, especially at my age <laughs> and my health, <laughs> like a heart attack in a food court surrounded <laughs> by like, you know, tweeners. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all like either playing Angry Birds or snapping pictures. Where oh shit, bro, that guy just died. <laughs> and they're all snapping pictures. Snapchat. Here I am. It's all you have to do is dial nine one one. But they're all and Snapchat. OMG, this fat guy just died. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're all snapping pictures. All I hear is the Angry Birds theme as everything goes to black. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, the conflict here in Civil War II, <laughs> not in the food court, <laughs> they want to use this new inhuman as a way to predict crimes before they happen. It's and minority report shit. That's it. Minority report. Carol Danvers, Miss Marvel, is like all on board with this. And she wants to swoop in. They do like a sneak attack thing. Um, they basically ambush everybody before they do it because of this inhuman. Mm -hmm. Well, to the point where Tony Stark doesn't think it's a good idea, but he's kind of on board until Captain Rhodes, Rhodey, mm -hmm. War Machine, yeah, gets killed when they ambush Thanos. Wow. She-Hulk is seriously injured and put into cardiac arrest. She's out. Wow. Um... Then Tony's like, no, no, this can't be, this is not right. You know, it's mm -hmm. like the whole uh, Jurassic Park thing. You know, you, you know, you thought, could we, you never thought, stopped and should thought, we? should we? Yeah. You know? So, and for those uninitiated, Carol and Rhodey were married. They were husband and wife. Really? Yes. War Machine and Miss Marvel were married. Wow. Um, to the and then afterward, uh, She Hulk wakes up briefly and says, "Basically, protect the future to to Miss Captain Marvel." Mm -hmm. So she's on board with her and she passes, flatlines. Yeah, She Hulk's dead. All that while all this is going on, the heartfelt moment, blah blah blah. Tony is it suits up, goes to the Capitol, the family, the Inhumans. Yeah, takes this kid mm -hmm. and abducts him. Brings him back, starts doing tests on him. Of course, you don't just walk into the first family's uh, <laughs> play without Black Bolt and the Queen Medusa <laughs> and all the other family yeah. without invoking. You know, you get invited. You don't just show up, <laughs> which brings the Inhumans there, and hmm. they're coming in. He's doing tests. They're they're fighting, so it invokes another war. So there, it's like a three way thing, yeah. you know. You got Stark, Team Stark, Team Danvers, and then the Inhumans who bomb in. In the middle of that, Ulysses has another vision. And he sees uh, death, mass death, with all three parties considered. Yeah. Hulk is killing them. Oh, because She-Hulk's gone. And so, which prompts them to go to Banner, who is just, you know, doing his thing doing tests, mind his own business, keeping calm. That's where it ends. Hmm. They show up, and they're all gang-busting fucking wow. Bruce Banner. <laughs> and that's where it ends, right? It's an eight-issue miniseries. I believe that was number three. Hmm. That, it ended on three. Interesting. Right? I, I think I need to give those a read. Um, yeah, I'm like, ooh. I'm like you with the, the, the rebirth. Yeah. I'm like, do I want to keep going, or do I want to wait for the trade paperback? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know that uh, Spider-Man is supposed to be on Team Captain Marvel, I think. Which, Stark. He's on Stark. Stark. Right, that's good. Because yeah. I could have swore that he was on you know, Captain Marvel's team in this. And, uh, and after hearing your ex explanation, I was like, huh? No. Like, Stark. Sp he's always going with Stark, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. It's just... Uh, 
for some reason I thought he was on Captain Marvel's team, and, that, and then I heard your explanation. I was like, that makes no sense. Why would he be on that team? Yeah, yeah. Because, like, uh, especially I guess, now... Uh, I guess with this the, time, Tony's kind of the good guy. I mean, just, in a way. Carol Danvers is very oh. aggressive. Like, not... Not a bad guy, not an anti-hero. Yeah. Definitely not a Punisher type character, yeah. but more Wonder Woman like. Mm-hmm. Where I mean, the Marvel version of Wonder Woman, where it's like, why is everybody talking? She doesn't talk. She just actions speak louder than words, and yeah. to the point where you know she doesn't think before she acts. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you know, but yeah, definitely a woman of action. Awesome, and I can't wait for that movie too, man, because she's been around since early late 60s 70s cornerstone of marvel yeah but an unsung marvel hero but she's been around since forever mm-hmm. you know yeah she's so, uh that'll be cool yeah yeah so yeah i definitely have to do me some research on some very large i know she won some sort of oscar or something yeah so you got some credibility with you know you got oscar winners and emmy award winning actor actresses and actors mm-hmm. want to I want to be in a comic book movie, so I mean they're pretty much dominating. But I, I'm not. I'm just not familiar with. I, I she was a Scott Pilgrim movie. Brie Larson. She was the I'll, Scott Pilgrim. Movie. I'll look her up after. Yeah, I will probably put up a picture on here. Yeah. Uh, once I know who it is, it sounds super familiar. I don't know. Anymore. Um. But yeah. Uh. I'm an old man, as you point out many <laughs> times. I don't know any of these. Actors it's okay, today. Grandpa Sean. It's okay. We'll get you back to the home. <laughs> yeah. Best my nap time. Uh, anyways, yeah, that looks uh, that sounds cool. I'm definitely gonna have to give that a read, and can't wait for that movie to come out. Yeah. Um, I so. think uh, I think that's about all the time we got for today. Winding it up. Yeah. Closing the long box. So uh, <laughs> thank you guys for listening in. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm really. We're still having fun here. Still enjoying this, so we're gonna keep doing this podcast. Uh, Please like, comment, subscribe, and you know share our videos with people you know that like comic books. Uh, I want this channel to grow. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't expect us to become super famous, but I do want us to branch out. I want us to you know touch more lives and you know people who enjoy our bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Uh, so, yeah, and thank you guys for you know sticking with us and listening in. And, as always, have a day!